Away from Thoroughbred Diesel, I'm here today with Charlie Fish. Charlie Fish is the owner of KC Turbos, and we are really excited about him being here. And I got to be honest with you, uh, uh, Charlie and his wife Casey came down uh, for training, and all of our Ford guys in the building are just absolutely geeking out about Charlie being here. They're pulling him aside, asking him a thousand questions, whatnot. So it's a big Ford day at Thoroughbred Diesel, having you here as a whole. Um, KC Turbos for us is, has been one of our best selling turbo brands that we carry uh, and it, and honestly it is it's an honor to do business with you all because it, it's it's nice to do business with the company and you guys have got um you know all the integrity in the world i you and i've had to talk a couple times on on some things and 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 i, I feel like we we both do it the same way we want to take care of the customer the customer comes first and and we do everything to to, to make that happen for the customer so they are very customer centered and obviously they're very turbo centered so um charlie how'd you get into the turbo business how'd you get into the diesel business happy to be here you know the geeking out i I know that's some of my problem because I get like super into it and we're talking trucks, seven, three, six O's and my wife especially is like, come on, let's go like this way. We got stuff to do. So happy to be here. Yeah. Love it. Happy you know, you. We're, we're, I think of us as one of the small guys maybe, but some people are starting to think of us more of one of the bigger guys. But when I got into the market, we were, we were really small, obviously. Yeah. And uh, I've been into cars my whole life, trucks my whole life. And I had a six O power stroke and it broke down like a lot. You know, if anyone knows most reliable diesel in the world, 6 yeah. power stroke, read up on it if you haven't, but yeah. had problems, had to learn to fix it, didn't have any money, spent a lot of time on the forums before Facebook was big and all those things. We were on the forums, learning, researching, and I wanted to go faster. Yeah. So we were doing head studs and I wanted to send the turbo out. That was pretty mechanical, never built the turbo before, but I ordered a turbo from, I'm not going to say who they were, but they were supposed to be the best. Yeah. You know, and I had to send in a core. The communication was horrible. I was told I'd get it back in two weeks. They had it for months. I had to like threaten them to get my turbo because I didn't have a yeah. spare turbo. That's all I had. I yeah. sent in the core. When I did get it back, it was disappointing. It didn't perform like the people on the internet said it did. And, and I didn't blame them. I, I looked internal and I learned a lot about the truck. I learned all about the tuning and the turbos and the boost leaks and the exhaust leaks. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to run good. Yeah. So I went to a local turbo shop. It was Turbo and Electric. A guy by the name of Jeff worked down there. And I was like, hey, man, let's take this thing apart. I want to learn what's wrong with it. Well, long story short, we made a few changes, put on the truck, ran phenomenal. Incredible. Yeah. And I wasn't like creating a turbo company. I was just trying to get my truck up and going. Yeah. And I posted about it on a few of the <clears> forums. And I started getting private messages from people saying, I had the exact same experience. Horrible customer service, no communication, had to send it to my core, and then it didn't run as good as everyone online said yeah. it did. And they're like, can you help me out? And I was like, well, I mean, I can. I, I got to go to this turbo shop and have them build something and, you know, give me a few weeks. And I started doing a few orders here and there, and it started picking up more and more. And at the time, I was working for my wife's father-in-law or my father-in-law, Rob, um, and I was a roofer. I did yeah. roof and dirt, roofer by day, turbo builder by night. But yeah. I wasn't building them. I'd go to the shop. We'd get the parts, they'd build me a couple of turbos and I'd sell them. And then I started spending a lot of nights there and a lot of weekends there learning to build. And, you know, over time it turned into a side business, which turned into a second full time job. And then Rob came to me one day and he's like, Look, you got to pick one or the other. Yeah. And he said, If I was you, I, I would do this. He's like, This looks like a thing that, yeah. that you could do. And so I bought all the stuff, put it in my garage, started building them at night in my own garage, stopped using that turbo company, and then quit my job. and. You know, my wife carried me and supported me through all of it. If I can say anything is that Casey has been the biggest supporter of the business. My wife's name is Casey, KC yeah. Turbos. I, it's K and C Turbos, Casey and Charlie, yeah. KC Turbos. But she paid all the bills. She did the mortgage. She had a full-time job. And I did turbos, sold turbos, built turbos. All the money went back into the turbos. And then it just has taken off. I'm known as like the 6-0 guy. But we branched into seven threes and six fours and six sevens. And now six sevens is one of our biggest market. I mean, obviously they've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of innovation that had to go on. So, I mean, that's, that's how we got into it. And that's, it's been 13, 14 years. And now we're looked at as one of the bigger guys, but gosh, I remember when we first got started in the garage at night, you know, working nights and weekends, missing family time. And it is, it is just really blown up for us. And working with people like Thoroughbred has been fantastic. You guys are easy to deal with. You guys take care of your customers. Sure. You know, we, we like hearing from people that order from you because you guys answer the phones. You guys answer your emails. You're, you're walking people through the turbo sizing. I won't go into other people, but we do have some dealers that they have no idea what the turbos are. Yeah. 
and they sell whatever they can sell to them. And then any after support, they're like, hey, just call KC Turbo. Yeah. So it's been a great relationship yeah. working with you guys on this. Yeah, absolutely. And we've grown together too. That's what we were talking about today when we were touring the warehouse. You know, I think that we actually were growing at the same time. Once we opened up the warehouse, that was when you guys were ready to, to handle yeah. a warehouse. I think we were a little part, iffy yeah. at first. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know if we can handle a big guy like you. There's a lot. Well, there's a lot to do with that too. You know, there's a lot to do with that. And, and COVID was a lot of that, you know, supply on turbos and, and you just don't, and a company like you all, you all didn't want to, fall short of that and you never did you know you were always able to keep supply to us through covid and everything and that was a big thing a big thing for us yeah. going back to the beginning the sending in your core yep. waiting a couple of weeks no communication no after support that that was the opposite of my business model i wanted to ship stuff out within 24 to 48 hours i wanted to answer the phone answer the emails answer the communication before and after if they had problems obviously we wanted to build the best product possible but to this day we've striped that and through covid it's funny because a few of my competitors i saw people posting stuff online like oh good luck getting a turbo from kc based out of china with the covid we never did we go out of stock on yeah, anything absolutely not. i don't i don't know if we went out of no. stock on anything we i don't were, know that y'all have ever had a back order on us for anything honestly. if if we do they are very short yep. but we pride ourselves in shipping out quick mm -hmm taking care of customers because we're customers too. I've been there before. I've had, yep. I got into business because my truck was down for months. It was the only vehicle I had. They wouldn't answer the phone. They wouldn't answer the email. So moving forward, we, we didn't want to be that guy. We yep. wanted the performance, the reliability, the quality, but we also wanted the customer support, which it sounds like is yep. one of your guys's, I mean, walking around here, all the guys on the phone, helping, answering, you take walk-in customers, internet. I mean, you guys yep. just really help the customers. Yeah, well, thank you. But the whole China thing's bullshit anyway, because I mean, you guys are obviously very, very steeped in your Garrett sales. So you're using the OE style charger. So all the modifications are done on, on that too. Well, I mean, we build from all over <laughs> the world. We build from lots of different platforms. Yeah. And, and you know, Garrett's one of the best turbo manufacturers in the world. We, we buy millions of dollars in Garrett turbochargers, but you look at a lot of their individual components, they come from China too. Right. Maybe assembled yeah. in Mexico, come from China. So when yeah. someone says, oh, do any of your parts come from China? Yeah. I mean, every, everybody's building stuff from China. Yeah. But it, we're based in Arizona. That's where everything's put together. We do machine work, we do building, but we do buy Garrett parts, we buy Borg parts, we have parts made for us. We buy from all over the world. But those people spreading rumors that we're just, like I, I, the one guy says we're a Alibaba China front with just a marketing department, which is just nuts that there are people out there saying that. But we, we've tried to be at the forefront of innovation. And I wanna say that we kinda, we took a while to get into the 6-7 world. Yeah. Some of that was, I'm a 6-0 guy, I'm a 7.3 guy, yeah. you know, 6.7, it took me a while. I remember the 11 to 14 turbos were tough. Yeah. Those are the first ones that came out, basically nobody modified them at yeah. all. I remember it was in uh, late 14 or maybe early 15, Morgan Prim mm -hmm. called me and he's like, hey man, I want you to build turbos for me. And I, wa I, I wanna work with you to build the turbos in the 6.7 world. A and I turned them down because I thought it was just the 11 to 14 turbo. I didn't realize that Ford had changed the turbo for 15, 16, 17, and, and he went a different direction at that time. Mm -hmm. Morgan Prim was a great guy. We, I didn't get to know him really well, but we did work a little bit together. Yeah. And man, I missed that boat because his turbos took off, other people's turbos took off. The 15 to 19 turbos really opened up the aftermarket world for these trucks. Yeah. Ford themselves came out with their Ford retrofit kit. Yeah. People that don't know the 11 to 14 turbos, very problematic. Mm -hmm. Some guys don't have issues. I know some guys have gone through 10. Yep. I, I was just talking to the, what's that lady that has the 6.7 here? Yeah, just did yep. the DCR yep. pump. Yeah, yep. she was telling me, she knows a few people that have gone through like 10 turbos and yep. she said she's on, uh, I think her original one and mm -hmm. doesn't have any problems, but overall, very problematic. Yeah, driving style and tuning and stuff's got a whole lot to do with eating that charger just a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the wrong tune just, just kill the left. Overspin, 14. they're yeah. teeny tiny. Yep. You can overspeed them really yep. quick. Yep. So then, the first thing, I think the first big mod that people were doing was, was a retrofit kit. Mm -hmm. I think people tried to stick Duramax turbos on them early on, 6.0 turbos, and then when 15 came out, they were just sticking 15 to 17 turbos on yeah. 11 to 14. And, and I think Ford was first, I don't know who it was, but they, the Ford retrofit kit yeah. was created. Yeah, talk a little bit about the, the, the difference between what, what we're calling a drop-in turbo and the, and the retrofit kit okay. so on, on that. So early on, Ford released their retrofit kit turbo. It, it's, a, it's a big box, yeah. lots of parts, probably like 200 components in yeah. there and that's what everybody sold they were great big horsepower bump and then once you did the retrofit now you had all the options for the aftermarket turbos from mm -hmm. people well we looked at it we tried to build a drop-in turbo and there's no such thing as a drop-in anyone saying this is a 100 drop-in turbo it's not true anything you put on there is some sort of 
retrofit kit. It's going to include a different pedestal, a different coolant line, maybe a different intake boot. There's different levels of retrofit kits is what I like to say. So the Ford retrofit kit, the most components possible, it's replacing downpipe, exhaust manifolds, a bunch of nuts, a bunch of bolts. It, it, it's pretty complicated. Uh, they're often out of stock. It's gotten a little better, but especially yeah. during COVID. I mean, you go six, eight, nine months and Ford has just said, we're out. Yeah. So we looked at the table and we decided to build what's called the Warlock kit. So the Warlock kit is basically the same thing as a retrofit kit with less parts. And a lot of that comes from the design of the turbine housing, but you still get the updated 17 turbo, the updated 17 pedestal, and the updated lower intake manifold from Ford, which is larger than the 11 to 14. So there are people now making that's confusion of, they call it a drop in turbo. It's still a kit. And the only difference between their kit and our kit is that ours includes the lower intake manifold, yeah, right. which is larger and flows more air. Why we stuck with our kit versus the other one is we still use a 17 style turbo, 17 style pedestal, 17 style lower intake manifold, 17 style gaskets. So that means for you and your customers, Heaven forbid there's a problem. Yeah. Your turbo sucks something in and blows up. You could pull right into the Ford dealership and, and throw a Ford turbo on there and get back on the road or buy something used or buy a competitor's turbo, whatever it is, with just swapping the turbine housing. With some of those other options of the drop-in, you're not bolting a 17 turbo in there and going. So you've got the more restrictive lower intake manifold yeah. and you've got the aftermarket style pedestal that is proprietary and a few other components that are proprietary. So I'm not saying they're a bad design, but I think there's just confusion when people say, well, get the drop in versus the kit. They're all kits, just different yeah. levels of kits. Yeah. And, and the Warlock has been fantastic for us. I, yeah. I, number one selling turbo from us. Yeah, it's people one people love them. Yeah. We, yeah. we got a couple of different sizes, but even just doing a 17 turbo, on an 11 to 14, you're talking 100 to 150 horsepower yep. gain. That, that's what most people hope for out of an aftermarket turbo. And a lot more reliability. More reliability, but it's a better charger. It's stronger, easier to rebuild. They almost, it's interesting, the 11 to 14 was very high tech. It was dual ball bearing, it was VGT, it yep. was waste gated, dual scroll. Dual scroll. Yep. I mean, there's like articles written by people that went to fancy universities about the best turbo in the world. And then no one wants, so they take it off and throw it away because it was problematic. It well, had issues. It's hard coming out of six four because you've got one. Honestly, you can say whatever you want to about six four, but probably with the dual sequential, it's probably one of the best towing stock platforms out there. I mean, the the truck towed amazing, and they had a big, they had big shoes filled coming in that eleven oh. fourteen year. They're, they're the eleven There's model year. You know, I, I mean, mean, with this, with a drop in modified <laughs> yeah. six four turbocharger, you can spool faster than anything yeah. else and make a thousand horsepower. Yeah. There's no other platform that can do that. And the six four when it ran. Yeah. It, yeah. Ran it ran good when it when it ran yeah. but there yeah. was other problems with it but the turbos were not the turbos yeah. were fantastic so they were trying to yeah. keep up with that yeah. compound system and, yeah. and they it, got close they got they close, got close. <laughs> nowhere near on the top end power yeah. but the spool up and the towing of the 11 to 14 when they run they, they tow really yeah. good the 11 to 14 charger i mean really the top end of that was really the destruction of the turbo yeah. and people it? start turning that up yeah. i still see people online like oh yeah i make like 33 pounds of boost out of mine it's like, yeah. Oh man, yeah. you're not going to make that forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They top out at like 23 to 28 is what, what I hear is the safe zone. Yeah. And then they're just out of steam. They're just blowing hot air at that point. So we can geek out about six, seven uh, power stroke turbos all. And, and it's, it's a huge staple of your business. I, you know, this is a core, this is a key, or this is a, a, a core turbo for us in sales, but we got, I mean, we can't walk away from this and not talk about your 6.0 turbos and what you offer. I mean, you're the 10 blade, you're the 10 blade, 13 blade turbine guy. I mean, I mean we're, all, we're, we're always pushing the limits. I mean, early on, you know, we, we grew a, a large market share yeah. and there's a lot of good options on the market now, but we still strive to be the best. We're always innovative. We just released our dual ball bearing version. Uh, we had our jet fire turbo we released last year, which is incredible. And we've got new stuff that's being released in probably six to eight months. We've got uh, an 11 blade which spools faster and makes more power than anything else on the market, but it doesn't whistle. That's what I was going to say. The guys have been, where's the noise at? Uh, <laughs> we're going to release a nine blade. There's a lot of people that ask yeah. for the nine blade. The nine blade spools slower. Anyone yeah. that's dinered it back to back, the nine blade spools slower, but they scream. They are incredibly loud. We don't offer one now, but we will be offering it. We have our traditional 10 blade. It's still loud. It still whistles. It doesn't scream as much as a nine, but it's not as laggy yeah. as a nine. Um, but we've got, a, we got some big things coming for the 2020. A lot of the, the 
6.0 because it's based on a lot of the 2020 technology. Yeah. The Ford is pushing the turbos, but we want to push right along with them. We're learning a lot from what the new turbos are doing and what they're able to accomplish. We're trying to put that into older technology like the 7.3, like the 6.0, you know, like the 6.7. I know it's still a 6.7, but the turbo technology has drastically changed over the years. I, th I don't know that a lot of people will know this, uh, but you guys don't just make Ford turbos. I mean, you make them for the Chevrolet. Yeah, we're, we're dipping our toe. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I am not a Cummins guy. I'm yeah. not an anti anti-Cummins guy or yeah. anything, but we're so busy with the Ford stuff, it's right. hard for us to branch out. But honestly, it's because a lot of our dealers are pushing us like, hey, come on, please, we want you to make some yeah. make make some Dodge Turbos, Cummins, get into the, the Duramax world, because they said, we just love working with you, your customer support, the quality of the product. We wish we could offer yours instead of some of these other options. We are, we're dipping our toe in there. We released yeah. kind of a teaser video, maybe some uh, VGT 5.9 Cummins oh. options. Ooh. Uh, you know, we've got some, we reman the 6.7 turbos and we do a little bit to them. Yeah. We plan to release a lot of options over the next year or two. Yeah. We've got a Cummins that we uh, driving around, modifying, working on, learning. Same thing, the Duramax. Yeah. Uh, probably, we already do some Duramax stuff, but yeah. we're getting into the newer stuff, the L5P, which yeah. is an incredible truck. Yeah. I, I got to ask, we said we were going to talk about this and, I, and it just came to mind. I, so I'm going to pitch something to you. Talk to a guy right now that's hung on the fence about, you know, I, I don't want to do VGT anymore. You know, talk to that guy. So tell him why VGT, not only is VGT where we are right now, and I, I don't know that you can say it's the, it's the future, but as far as drivability of these engines, the, the horsepowers that we're reaching is, you know, the horsepowers that they come off, the, that they roll off the assembly line with, you know, VGT is, is, a, is an integral part of that, not only with B, because of the emissions, but... Talk to that guy about VGT. You know what I mean? Just say, there's hey, pluses and minuses to it. Yeah, Anyone course. that says you everything's better in every way all the time, it's not true. There's always going to be some sort of tipping point where bigger or smaller VGT, non-VGT. Uh, let's talk about the negatives of the VGT. Okay. There's limits. Yeah. You're, you're not making 1,500 horsepower fuel only with a drop in VGT. It just, yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. You're not doing that with an S300 turbo either. That's you're going to do exactly S400, right. GT50, yeah. GT55. Well, there are limits. All right, well, where are most guys at? I feel like most guys are still in the... I mean, 7.3, you're talking 400, 400 to 500, yeah. 6.0, 500 to 600, yeah. maybe 6.7, 6 to 6.50. But most guys fall under the 6.50 mark. Yeah. And in that range, there are a lot of benefits to the VGT. You got the exhaust brake on some platforms. You got the quicker spool up. You've got the less smoke output. That doesn't bother everyone, but I don't like rolling coal everywhere I go. I like a quick spooling fast truck, responsive, off the line. Well, no matter which way you slice it, if you spec both turbos properly and have good turbos, good turbo designs from each, the VGT is going to spool faster. Mm -hmm. And in, in many instances, make similar, if not more power when they're smaller. Yeah. The bigger you go, the more benefits you're going to see from some of those non-VGT turbos. And what I tell people is in the five to 600 horsepower range, you are getting all negatives by going to a non-VGT. Mm -hmm. Anyone that's actually tested did it will tell you that's the truth yeah. there's the i'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments i already know this yeah. there's the non-vgt fanboys oh no mine spools just like stock yeah. those guys I i've had people on those things with big turbos s476 369 oh yeah mine spools just like stock and i tow and then they send you a private message hey man i can't tow with my truck anymore it it's too hard it smokes yeah. too much it downshifts too much i, yeah. I think th i think people put on a front online because it's cool yeah. maybe and then and then behind the scenes a lot of them often end up back with a VGT or a smaller turbo. Yeah. If you stay smaller with a non-VGT, it's not as bad, but you're not making more power. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you spec them the same, you put them on there, the VGT is gonna have that edge in, in, in the spool up department. And, yeah. and for me, that that's what I care about. I, I also have a Whipple Coyote F-150, yeah. regular cab short bed. There's a reason it's a Whipple. People say there's no turbo lag, but there is. Yeah. I like that I like that instant, instant throttle yeah. response. I like, yeah. I like rolling around a corner, being able to just roast my tires, yeah. no smoke and go fast. Yeah. You start losing that with a non VG the bigger you go. So yeah. it, that's how I feel about it. I mean, has, yeah. what's been your experiences? It's a, it's same way. I, it, it, being around this, it going, it going you, you know, it looks like you, you've been at the pinnacle with race trucks and whatnot. Um, when I'm when I'm setting it up for myself, I'm setting it up with that 550. Just drives excellent, almost instant boost. It's the damn thing is making five pounds of boost before you even start it. You know what I mean? And that's that's what I want. I want instant throttle response and then instant boost too. So I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And and it's funny with the VGT guys that are that are coming out of it. How many of them? And this is I know this is going to sound just blatantly stupid, but there there are so many guys that will call in here and they're you know they're they're talking about hey they want to get away from the VGT turbo. You know there's not a whole lot we can do for you in that 
uh, you know, that department, but they've got to keep that exhaust brake. You know, they, they're, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live without the exhaust brake. Well, man, the exhaust brake makes a big difference. <laughs> it makes a big, makes a big I mean, difference. Being a, you're just electronically controlling the turbo. So there's a yeah. lot of things you can do. You can adjust spool up, top end power, limit top end power. VGT is kind of like having a built in wastegate, built in exhaust mm -hmm. brake, and adjustable tuning for it. So it, it offers a lot of variability when it comes to that. Maybe one of the downsides we didn't talk about earlier is you got to maintain your truck with a VGT turbo. Mm -hmm. In the 6.0 specifically, yeah. A lot of guys maybe have an EVP sensor problem yeah. or the wiring to the VGT sensor is bad. And like, oh, I'll just, I'll just non-VGT swap it. Yeah. Oh, I'll just make it drive like garbage because I can't get this yeah. to run right. Yeah. There's a certain amount of people that do do that. And a lot of people love the sound. That's a love-hate relationship. I like the sound of a whistly turbo. The non-VGT is more like a rumble. But I don't know. For all my personal trucks, I've gone both yep. back and forth. I always end up back with the VGT turbo yep, personally. Exactly, and 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 that's and that comes right back down to drivability. You're not doing you're not doing it because of reliability. You're doing it because of drivability. Yeah, anyone that yep. said they had a modern yep. VGT turbo and it spooled like garbage, it, it, there was something wrong with your truck. That's right. There's too many people yep. that have gone back and forth, dynoed it, tested it, towed yep. with it, unless you're doing a giant VGT, which they have inherent problems when you go too big. But yep. that five to six hundred horsepower range. It's tough to change away. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll, let's let's end on this. What's the future for KC look like? What's what's next for you guys? We want to continue innovating, and one of the things we're not moving on. You know, a lot of people made a 7.3 turbo 20 years ago, and that's still the same turbo they make. We're, we're changing ours every few years, and we have a brand new turbo being released. Actually, the 7.3 Summit here in a few weeks, mm -hmm. brand new, ground up, going to blow away everything on the market, including. Our own turbochargers yeah. it's incredible it's going to spool faster and make more power than our existing options bigger bearings better bearings so we are constantly innovating not just into the future but we're going back so we want to better turbos for the 7.3 better turbos for the 6.0 we're reinventing the 6.4 turbos we have out we've got new options coming out for the 6.7 we're branching out into the cummins we're branching out into the duramax and we're branching out into the ecoboost so we just want to continue doing what we're doing but for more people we just yeah. we want to make the best products possible with good support, good customer service, good warranties, and everything. Yeah, all while keeping Casey happy. Yes, yeah. hey, keeping the boss. We, we all know who runs the company. <laughs> when you stop by, everybody knows yeah. who's the boss, and it's not me. That's awesome. Charlie, it's an honor. Hey, it's thanks for honor. having us. Yeah, honor to carry your all's products. If you guys have got any questions about Casey Turbos or anything that we can do to help you, just give us a call, and we'll be glad to get you taken care of. Thanks for watching.